When I was a kid, I used to play with these Rock'em Sock'em robot toys. But now that I'm an adult kid, I thought it would be fun to rebuild this toy. But because I have a problem with overcomplicating and overengineering everything that I do, I'm gonna put some pneumatic air cylinders as well as some electronics to make this more interesting. In the previous video, I got to the point where I was able to connect my air compressor and test out the punching arm mechanism. That test was a huge success. It gave me the confidence that I'm heading in the right direction. In fact, over the weekend, I built a second arm. One thing you may have noticed on these prototypes is these little red brackets. I never planned on using 3D printed brackets in the full build. They were just for prototyping purposes. So I went ahead and I ordered some of these from Send Cut Send, who is a sponsor of this video. If you haven't visited their website, go check them out to see how they can help you on your next project. You can use my link in the description to get a 15% discount on your order. The first thing I need to do is swap out these 3D printed brackets for the metal ones that I ordered from Send Cut Send. I also need to build the central torso part of the robot so that I can attach both arms as they swing. This is sort of the back piece or the shoulder blades. I'm not sure what to call it, but it's gonna hold both arms. All right, so this goes kind of like this. And that's the left arm punching. This seems a little bit wide. Uh, hopefully once I get the body made, the proportions will sort of even out a little bit. I did take a measurement off of the actual toy and I am scaling it all by a constant factor of 12. So I'm kind of relying on that fact uh, that the proportions will turn out looking right. I need to design and print some arm pieces that will bolt on to this mechanism. This is the part that I'm talking about. I'm gonna split this into three different pieces. I have the upper arm, the forearm, and the fist. To print all of these parts, I'm gonna be leaning heavily on my Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon. This thing has been an absolute workhorse for me. It has run for several days straight, running part after part, and everything comes out perfect. I'm still blown away at the speed of this thing. My only complaint is that it has a build volume just a little bit smaller than my previous machines, which for projects like this, it just means that I have to slice the models in half and print them in multiple pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on printing these pieces. I'm printing the fist piece here, and I'm trying something new. This could be a total failure, this may not work, but I'm gonna try it anyway. So the next layer that this is going to print is going to be a large overhang. It's gonna fill in this square hole here. So instead, I asked the slicer to stop it right at this layer so that I could insert a piece of this profile here. So now when I hit resume, I'm hoping that the 3D printer will just continue to go right over top of that piece of aluminum and use it as a support rather than having support so far in there that I won't be able to get to them. There it goes. So it's starting to fill in that overhang. I pulled the build plate off and I'm ready to see whether or not my experiment worked. I think it did. It seems like this thing was able to hold that overhang up. So I can pull this piece of aluminum out. And if I remove this from the build plate and look inside, I can see I've got a really good uh, supported overhang here. So that worked great. I'm sure I'm not the first one to think of that. I'm, I know other people have done it, but that was the first time I tried it and it worked out great. So I'll be doing that in the future for sure. This has been one of the biggest projects that I've ever taken on, and I don't really have enough space to do this on my regular workbench, so I set up an additional workbench for this project. The first thing I need to do is use some more aluminum extrusion to build a base frame and anchor it to the workbench so that these robots will have a solid foundation as they fight. Once I'm done with that, I can start assembling the upper arm, the forearm, and the fist pieces onto the robot. Quite honestly, this is going way better than I expected. I don't wanna jinx it, but I think everything's gonna work out just how I imagined. This is the air manifold. This is how I connect all of the different solenoids and then supply the air. And I'm noticing a problem with how I'm gonna do this. 
I don't have enough room to put this little quick connect coupler on there. Uh, it just kind of runs into the aluminum extrusion here. So what I think I'm gonna do instead is actually swap the little ports. I'm gonna put the air supply over here and then just put the plug on the end here. So that way I can plug in the air supply from the back and I don't think I will have any interference issues. Okay, you remember when I said I didn't want to jinx it? This is going way better than I expected. Well, my little daughter came down to hang out with me, as she often does, and she accidentally knocked one of the pieces down, and it shattered. If you look closely here, you can see this is the damaged part. This ended up being sort of a blessing in disguise because it revealed a problem with my prints. I set the infill setting down to like 1 or 2% to save print time, but it ended up making these things a lot more flimsy and brittle than they needed to be, and they probably would have broken anyway because after all they are fighting robots. I've been taking everything from the toy version and scaling it up to about 12 times but that meant that these head pieces turned out to be really really large and they're just kind of hard to assemble and they didn't turn out very great anyway. So what I'm going to do is actually increase the infill setting back to its normal amount but I'm going to shrink the head to about 70% of what it currently is and by scaling it down to 70% now I can fit the whole head on the build plate and I don't have to worry about slicing the model and gluing it back together. Here's what the scaled down version of the head looks like. Now it doesn't match the same scale as all the other parts but I don't think anybody's going to notice except for everyone who's watching this video. I designed a little slot in here that's going to fit some 2020 aluminum extrusion. That will give me a perfect spot to thread on the pneumatic cylinder. That is looking so good. <laughs> Look at that thing. And then when there's a knockout, this thing will just pop right up. This is so cool. I'm excited. I have three pneumatic cylinders for each robot, and each pneumatic cylinder requires two tubes that run to it. So I designed this little bracket that slides over the aluminum extrusion, and it allows me to route that tubing through the skeletal structure and keep it nice and tidy. So I've already discovered a little leak here at this threaded joint. So I need to fix this before moving on. In trying to fix that leak, I over tightened this nut and it actually just broke off in there. I'm so stupid. This is going way better than I expected. There's a little piece of metal stuck in that thread. Uh, this is not good. I can get a screwdriver in there that's the right size to try to grab onto that and back it out. Oh, I think that's gonna work. Can you see that? It's coming out slowly. I just gotta be able to grab onto it. There we go. Now if I get some needles, oh, there it goes. All right, so I've backed out the piece. Luckily I didn't, I don't think I've destroyed the threads in here. I just found this in my bag of replacement parts. It was the last one, so hopefully I can put that in there and that'll fix the problem. Okay, this time I'm not gonna over tighten it. Let's give that a shot. Connect this back up. I'm connecting the air supply up. And I do not hear a leak. I'm gonna have to get closer with my ear. Awesome, I think that leak is gone. Now I can move forward. After I did that test on the prototype in the first video, I ordered some airflow control valves and I put them in line with the air supply. And as the name suggests, it allows me to fine tune how fast the air is being delivered to the pneumatic cylinder. So that means that if the arm is punching too hard, I can dial it back and make it a little softer.
Here's the moment I've been waiting for. I connected up the two arcade buttons, so the right button should punch the right arm. And then the left button punches the left arm. <laughs> I gotta move out of the way here. And I've dialed back those airflow control valves just a little bit. They were a little bit too scary for my liking, and I don't wanna break this thing right out of the gate. So I kinda have it dialed back a little bit, but this is just a proof of concept. I'm gonna fine tune everything from here on out. Let me find something that I can punch that will knock off the table. Hold on a second. Okay, here we go. I got some boxes here and I'm gonna line them up in the path. And here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, that was the wrong one. <laughs> I had it mixed around. Let me try this one. Okay, maybe I need to dial up that airflow control just a little bit. All right, here's try number two. It's a little better, a little better. Maybe I can do a little bit better than that. All right, test number three. Oh, I missed. All right, three, two, one. There we go. And of course we can't forget the head. That makes me crack up every time I see it. <laughs> I'm super excited to build the blue one. I don't know if you know this, but they actually have names. This one's Red Rocker and the blue one is Blue Bomber. And these are gonna be super cool when they're fighting each other. There's still a ton of work to do on this, obviously. I have a little inertial measurement unit that will detect how hard it's being punched. I also have a microcontroller that's gonna read those punches and it will show on a little LED display how much life is remaining in the robot. So I'll be continuing to make videos about this project. I know most YouTubers ask you to like and subscribe videos, but I am not gonna do that. Instead, I'm gonna ask you to watch this video right here.